So we're at IWCLL in New York, um, and we've just come from a session where we've been in, uh, exploring the role of the microenvironment in CLL. Um, I think it's undeniable now that although we understand that some genetic changes and epigenetic changes that take place in the actual leukemic cell are really important in uh, determining the clinical outcome of this disease, we also understand just how important the interaction of the leukemic cells with normal cells is in modulating or changing the way that the disease behaves. Uh, and two of the great speakers that uh, we had today at the session were Martina Seifert and Ingo Ringhausen. So Ingo, can I turn to you first? Um, your work has been really around and trying to understand the bone marrow microenvironment. Do you want to just tell us a little bit about some of the key findings that you've come up with? So basically what, what, what we and other people identified is that the bone marrow is a, is a compartment where the cell, where leukemic cells are extremely happy and they're protected from all sorts of chemotherapies. Okay. So we're trying to understand how the microenvironment of these cells in the bone marrow um, protect leukemic cells from cytotoxic therapies and newer therapies. The idea is to develop treatments which are targeted against these interacting cells and proteins and so to speak to develop alternative treatments. Yeah. Okay, so the therapies we've currently got are good at clearing the tumour from the, the peripheral blood from taking the cells out of circulation but perhaps not so good at targeting cells in these protective microenvironments. Yeah, that, that, that's correct. So we, we've seen enormous changes in, in research and in clinic basically and all mm -hmm. these drugs are really marvellous drugs but None of these drugs um, cure patients, as far as we can tell so far. So. Okay, so it's a cure that we're looking for? Yeah, eventually. Okay, excellent. So Martina, I think it's fair to say that um, the, the myeloid compartment, if you like, the, the other white blood cells, if you like, beyond the lymphocytes, have been, well, not exactly ignored, but they've been sort of the Cinderella of CLL research to date, but you're changing that. So tell us a little bit about what you've been doing with monocytes particularly. Yeah, so I think with the leukemia, with chronic lymphocytic leukemia, it's very similar as in many solid tumors. So there are the myeloid cells, the monocytes and the macrophage, and, and they create a kind of a chronic inflammatory milieu. And in this milieu, uh, the leukemia cells feel really, very well. They are supported, so they get growth factors and they get survival factors from these myeloid cells. And recently it um, got more and more attention that these myeloid cells also contribute um, to the suppression of T cell activity. So um, T cells recognize tumors uh, by um, new antigens that tumors produce and uh, tumors find a way to prevent this T cell activity against um, uh, the tumor. So, and myeloid cells contribute to that. So by um, secreting several factors like suppressive cytokines, for example, or by upregulating uh, checkpoint molecules like PDL1, they um, suppress T cell activity. And uh, this has been evident uh, now also for CLL, as has been shown for many other solid tumors. And so we are working on that. And one of the main um, interests we had lately is to understand how the leukemia cells actually do that. How are they impacting on the myeloid cells uh, to get them into these supportive cells? And so we have concentrated in the last couple of years on um, extracellular vesicles, on exosomes that are secreted, that are produced by the tumor cells. And we um, could show that these exosomes are taken up by the monocytes and by the macrophages. And um, the RNA, this, uh, which is uh, the cargo of these exosomes, these RNA molecules, they trigger the monocytes and the macrophage to, to become tumor supportive. Um, and we have shown that a toll-like receptor signaling um, is an essential pathway in this, um, um, in this um, yeah, mechanism. Okay. Mm. So do you think that's happening primarily in the tissue microenvironment, or is that happening 
all over the body, in the bloodstream yeah, as well? That's, yeah, that's a good question. So uh, we believe that um, mainly in the tissues, in the secondary lymphoid organs, okay. where the B cells get activated, they secrete a lot of these exosomes, and that's also where they interact with the myeloid cells, with the monocytes that are also present there. And so I think the tissue compartment is a lot more relevant or important in this respect than the blood. So a bit like that, what Ingo was saying about targeting maybe that interaction in yes. the bone marrow microenvironment, mm -hmm. if we can also maybe target the monocytes as mm -hmm. well at the same time, will potentially make immunotherapy work better? Yes, I think so, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So what do you think that might say for, for you, Ingo? What, what do you think that might um, mean for patients? Might it mean that we could reduce the, the amount of uh, therapy we give to patients? Or, and or make it more effective? What do you think? Well, I think both are, both are potential options. I mean, currently all the new ther therapies, venetoclax, arutinib, the continuous treatment, so no one likes to go to hospital, no one likes to take tablets, plus they cost a fortune. So, um, so the concept my lab and is work on is to understand how we can target, as I said, the microenvironment with the idea to have more effective treatments, uh, so to protect, to sort of, get cells of these niches um, and effectively eradicate a disease. Um. Fantastic. Well, thank you both. Um, I think it's fair to say that uh, this is a really exciting area of research in CLL and will un undoubtedly over the coming years produce some really major advances in therapy. So thank you both. Thank, thank you. Thank you.